Welcome back to lesson 3. Um, what we're going to do this lesson is do some matching. Pretty straightforward. Um, might even look at some blocks and what a block is and how you use it. <coughs> um, first thing we want to do is create a uh, hatch for our brickwork on our wall. Um, now these walls here are open at the moment. And you can't hatch something when you've got an opening like this. It needs to be surrounded by um, basically lines. Uh, now whether that's three or more lines, doesn't matter, as long as they all touch each other. So let's create a line. We'll do it from the stud wall to the brick wall. Hit enter. And we'll do the same down here. Space or enter. Okay. So now we've got those all closed up. We can start the hatch command. Um, I usually use bhatch. So bh at the command prompt. Press space or enter. And as you can see, we've up the top here, we've got a... Um, a few different hatches we can choose from. You cl click the little um, button there, we can scroll down and look to see what we've got. And because this is going to be a, a brick wall, we'll stick with ANSI 32. So I'll select that. Um, here we need to set our scale. Uh, in this drawing, it's already been set to 400, which is quite good. Um, seems to be working for us. So as you can see, when I highlight the mouse over different um, regions, that the hatch shows up so we know what it's going to look like and whereabouts it's going to be laid out. So to place it, just left click and you can do this with multiple um, boundaries if you like. We can do it separate ones. Uh, I'm going to do them all in one go. Hit uh, space or enter and we're out of command. And that's basically our hatch. Now if we select on the hatch, we can edit the hatch as well. We can now change it if we wanted to. Um, we're not the best hatch to show that um, to different hatches. So what we do is yeah, go press B B H for B hatch again, and we can yeah, uh, change it to these different types. Um, the next thing I want to uh, look at, or some do that, put it back to where it was. There we go. Is uh, blocks. Now a block is something that you will generally draw um, once and Insert into your drawings again and again and again. Saves a lot of time because you've drawn it once already. No, no need to draw it again. Um, so in this case, um, we've got a window. So these are all currently uh, separate lines and polylines. And we could drag and drop those. Um, but if we started a fresh drawing, we'd have to draw it all again from scratch or copy and paste it from another drawing. Uh, to get around that, we can create a block. So to do that, um, type B for block and a window comes up. Now I want to name the block so we'll just call it window uh, 600 millimeters and it asks us to, for a base point so um, so we'll pick a point so how about the bottom corner here that's where we want the point to be from asks us to select the objects so we'll select the polylines of the frame and the other lines that make up the window in the frame. Press enter or space, go back to the window, and we're in millimeters, so we can say OK. And we've now created a block. Now, to reuse that block, we, we want to insert it, so we type I, space or enter, and it's the only block we've got in there, so we select that, um, specify on the screen. That allows us, once we press OK, to uh, click a place on the uh, um, the drawing where we want to insert that window. So we'll click OK and we'll just place it here for now. And if I select it, you can see that it's just got one blue grit. Um, uh, usually by default that is. Uh, we can turn on all the grips. We'll look at that in a second. Um, but as you can see, it is one cont contained object. And uh, if you did want to make alterations to it, uh, one thing you can do is explode the block. So type X for explode. Asks us to select the uh, the object. So we'll select the window, and now it's now exploded. You see, we can click on those individual lines again, and uh, we'll just undo that. U for undo. Okay. Now, sometimes that insertion point's um, not always the best place we want it. Um, we might want to mirror it around, so we select it to make it a hot grip, so it's red. Again, look at 
um, what's happening down here in the command uh, prompt. Press space, 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 and space until we get to mirror. And if I move the uh, mouse to the left there, yeah, you can see that it's going to mirror around. So I've now mirrored the, um, the block. You can select it, hot grip again, press space to put it into the move command, and click there. So on our wall now, we've created uh, another window. Um, sometimes you might want to look at all the, the grips in the in the block, not just the insertion point one that we set up when we uh, made the block. So to do that, type grip block at the command prompt, hit enter or space, and change the value to 1. Now if we select our block, you can see all the grips, uh, which is useful because you can click on different different grips to do different things. So uh, it's quite a useful little thing. Um, blocks can be useful for many things, uh, not just windows, but um, you know, furniture and uh, sinks and things like that. Um, it's probably more suited to those sort of things, I, I would think, um, as a plain block. Uh, another thing we can do is create what's called a dynamic block, um, which allows us to stretch the, the window. So to do that, um, select the block and right click and go to block editor in the, in the menu that pops up. Now this is um, where we can start doing the dynamic block stuff. Um, so we'll get straight into it. We've got a few different things over here. You should have a, a little toolbar that's come up here or a tool palette. Um, so we want to be able to stretch the uh, the window in a linear way. Um, so we'll select linear uh, as a part of our, our very first thing we do is, is under parameters. So linear, and this is for insertion point, and this is for endpoint. So we'll just do that for the window. And as you can see here, we've got these two arrows. Um, we only want one. So select on the distance, right click, and uh, where is it? Nope, not there. Where is it going? Okay, uh, the way you do this is right click on the, uh, the bar when you've selected it. You go to properties. Uh, oh, sorry, that's the line. What we want to do is select the distance. Click on properties. And scroll down to here where it says 2. We only want to have 1. So press escape uh, to get out of that. Okay, so we can close the property window now. And next thing we want to do is we want to action make something happen when we when we move this uh, this arrow. So click on the actions. What we want to do is we want to be able to stretch um, uh, the window um, to suit the opening. So click on stretch and ask us to select the perimeter. That's the perimeter we put in, so distance. And now down here, it asks us for a second uh, point. So I'll click here, and it asks us now to draw a, um, a window over um, the bits that we want to stretch. So we want to stretch all that, and left click. And I'll select all the objects in the window. Hit space or enter. And we've created our first dynamic block. So we click over here on the right to close block editor, it will ask us if we want to save this. So we'll say yes, save changes to Windows 600ml. And we go back to the normal drawing. Now if we click on the, the, um, the block now, it highlights with this arrow and if we move it, we select it and move it, we can actually stretch the window. As you can see the, the window stretched, I haven't stretched the wall, but um, we can actually stretch it to whatever size we like. So dynamic blocks are very useful like that. Um, I'll get into some more in another tutorial um, about looking at making doors and so forth. That's a sort of basic way of uh, creating a um, dynamic block. Um, anyway, that concludes this uh, tutorial. Uh, stay tuned for more.